Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. EQA Nostalgia here to talk to you about Pantheon, Rise of the Fallen. Brad McQuaid has officially launched the Kickstarter for Pantheon, and it has been quite successful already. It hasn't even been 24 hours yet, and we're already looking at $42,224. Now that's roughly 5% of the overall goal, so people have definitely responded positively to this project. Now, I will be showing some of the footage from the official Kickstarter video. However, I do not plan on showing all of it here because I want people to go to the official page and watch it themselves. So the funding goal for this project is $800,000, and like I said, it's off to a great start so far. I would not be surprised in the least if this project meets its stretch goals, possibly every single one of them. This looks like one of those projects that's really going to knock it out of the park. Now there are 11 different pledge tiers ranging from $10 all the way up to $10,000 should you choose to donate. The third tier is what's going to get you into the game and that's $45. That's actually a little pricey in my opinion. Most games usually opt to go for the $15 to $20 mark. However, it has been successful and so far there are over 200 people that are backing that tier. Now keep in mind that's just my personal opinion based on the games that I have seen personally on Kickstarter. Now, based on the stretch goals that I've seen, people are definitely going to want to make sure that this meets every single one of them. Now, I actually did go through and verbally list all of them, and then I removed it because there are a lot of stretch goals. And the video ended up going like something in the 10 minutes by the time I was done talking about all of them. So I would ask that you visit the page, the official Kickstarter page, and check those out on your own. Now, one of the first things I noticed when they talked about the game is that it's taking place in a world where the players actually occupy the same place as gods. And that right there reminded me of classic style EverQuest. Because as you all know, Kazakh Thule and all those guys were always fun to raid. So I'm wondering if those bosses, or those gods rather, are going to be like bosses for raids. I'm not certain at this point, but it seems very likely. Now, in case you've missed my previous videos about Pantheon, this is going to be an old-school style MMORPG, meaning you will need to group up with people in order to accomplish things. And I was very thrilled to learn that this is going to be all about the adventure. It's going to have a sense of danger like back in the old days. You don't want to die. There's probably going to be a pretty steep repercussion for death. Now, I don't know if they're going to put corpse runs in the game. I think he said he wasn't looking towards that option. However, it's going to be something that you want to avoid. I can pretty much guarantee it's going to be nothing like World of Warcraft or modern MMOs where you die and you just have to run back to your corpse and, and pay a small fee to repair, repair your gear. They really want that sense of adventure there, and that's really good to hear, man. Nobody really does that anymore. So that's something to look forward to. Also, they want emphasis on exploration. They want people to actually go out there and feel that sense of danger. So they're not going to have a lot of teleportation methods and stuff like that. So I'm guessing Spirit of the Wolf is going to be something that people are going to want to have because it's going to make traveling a lot easier. I can just see it being like the old days, you know, traveling with speed buffs and invisibility on if you don't want to get your ass kicked. I mean, this is something, if you're an old school EverQuest fan and an EverQuest Online Adventures fan, like many of the people who are subscribed to my channel, you are going to want to back this. You're definitely going to want to get down on this game. Now, these guys are not shy to tell people that this is not going to be a game for everyone. This is not going to be a casual World of Warcraft game that just wants to bring everybody into a theme park. It's going to be hardcore, and it's going to cater to the hardcore old school MMORPG enthusiast. This is great news for me. Now, I know a lot of you guys probably know me as the guy who's saying, yeah, EverQuest Next is going to be fun. It's going to be new and exciting. That doesn't mean I don't crave a hardcore old school MMORPG because I definitely do. I mean, I am interested in seeing what's going to happen with EverQuest Next. I want to see how the genre evolves. But on the other hand, I do like the Holy Trinity and the old school you have to be with other people in order to proceed. I mean... I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of sick and tired of the soloing that is done in these games. When I played World of Warcraft, and I still play it from time to time until I get sick of it, and usually why I get sick of it is because I look around and I realize I'm just playing by myself. I'm not... nobody really talks. You'll run dungeons and things like that, and nobody says anything, and it's just... it's not the same. Back in the older days, people actually talked to each other. The combat was a little bit slower, and you had some downtime in between combat, where people could just sit around and talk a little bit, and you got to know people. And that looks like what this is going to be, so this is definitely going to be something that I am very, very interested in.
Brad has also stated that he wants this to be a game where players actually assess the situation and they plan ahead accordingly before they just charge into combat. So being in a party where you have to think about things and you have to strategize and work together, he says that just creates a more memorable experience. And I have to agree because I've done solo things where I've accomplished things that I'm proud of. But it's not the same when you don't have your companions there to say, yes, we did this as a group or we raided this encounter for, you know, I don't know, an hour or two and we accomplished it after trying several times, perhaps. It's just those those types of things that really create good memories and bonds between the player. Now, that's not to say in games like World of Warcraft you can't raid, but there there was just something lost in translation there. I really don't know how to explain it. It it, it was just really impersonal whenever I raided in that game. Now, that might be my fault because I, I often went into pugs or LFR, but it was just, it was never really a good experience. So hopefully they can recreate that. They can get that sense of community and the bond between the players back. Now, I also found this interesting. They said that as a fallen hero, you have the ability to gather essences of fallen warriors and harness their strengths and abilities. So you're going to be able to get abilities from fallen warriors. I'm not entirely certain what they mean by that, but apparently that's going to be the way you get your spells, I believe. And they even go as far as to say that you'll be able to take on the likeness of those fallen warriors. So this is very unique. I don't, I don't think I've ever heard of a game that allows you to do that. Needless to say, I'm very interested in learning more about how that's going to work, so definitely need to hear more about this. Now, in terms of adventuring, they said that you're going to be able to get some of your abilities from going through dungeons, exploration, and bosses. So that right there encourages people to actually get out there and explore. It's not just going to be like, well, I'll go here and complete this quest, go there, complete this quest, and when you level up, you get your abilities. You're going to be encouraged to do things in order to advance your character. And that right there is just awesome. I'm kind of having a nerd moment here because I'm really happy to hear about that. Because people tell you when they make their games, well, we're encouraging people to explore and this and that. They really don't, you know what I mean? They just, they just kind of turn you loose and tell you go do quests and what ends up happening is you don't really pay attention to anything you just go you just run from quest to quest this looks like it's trying to change that very exciting I mean traditionally when you raid a boss you do it because you want the loot you want the rare gear or something like that and this you can actually be able to get abilities from fighting these bosses so yeah that's gonna be very cool and it just paints a picture in my head of guild runs guilds getting together and saying well do you have these spells no all right well we're gonna go we're going to go ahead and we're going to raid this boss this week because so-and-so doesn't have these spells. And that that's just really cool. Now, another thing that they were saying is that if you adventure off of the beaten path, it is going to be dangerous. However, the more dangerous it is, the greater the reward will be. So that's something that people are going to want to do. They're going to encourage you to get out there where you don't necessarily feel very safe. And that right there just creates a sense of adventure and something that's been lacking very sorely over the past, I don't know, decade in MMORPGs. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, this is why I love Kickstarter, people, (laughs) because it allows developers to do what they really want to do, and they don't have to play to the tune of some corporation telling them, oh, no, you should do this to pull in more players, or you should do that to appeal to a more casual audience, and it just gives these guys more creative freedom. So, yeah, I mean, I I love Kickstarter, I love indie, and this is just the way to go. Now, there's just one more thing I wanted to mention before I wrap this up, is the way the graphics are shaping up and the way the game looks. Now, this is some pre-alpha stuff, so it's not representative of the way the final product is going to be, but it does look like a classic EverQuest-style game. And, you know, I know a lot of you guys weren't looking forward to EverQuest's next graphics. You don't really care for that more stylized look or that more cartoonish look. So this is definitely taking on more of a realistic look and more of a classic EverQuest feel. Now, obviously, I have not covered everything here, and I kind of did that on purpose because I don't want people to just see this video and go, oh, that seems cool. I want you to actually check out the Kickstarter page. You're going to find a lot more information there. They go into much greater detail about the game. So naturally, I am going to be posting a link in the description to take you to the Kickstarter page. And I really hope you guys get invested in this. I hope you you become a part of this project. It's very exciting, and you can look forward to me covering this extensively in the future. 
So if you're interested in more of these videos, make sure you subscribe, leave a like, and comment down in the comments section. I always read what people say, and I thank you guys for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all in my next video.